Hey guys, welcome to Quinny's Budget Crafts. It's about that time of year again, so uh, how about we make some gifts? Let's do letter openers. I'm gonna go the easy route on this one. We're not gonna use a forge or anything crazy like that. Just an angle grinder and maybe a sander or something. This uh, angle grinder I've got here is a really, really cheap one. It's like 15 bucks at Harbor Freight. And as far as metal goes, you can use whatever kind of metal you like, but if you stop by your local construction site and ask them for their trash saw blades, after they get done looking at you funny, they'll let you walk away with as many as you can carry. One thing to point out though is that the cutoff wheels for an angle grinder are just like the cutoff wheels on a Dremel, except much bigger and much scarier. So you absolutely do have to have like a face shield. You don't want that thing hitting you in the face. And of course a respirator and some ear protection is probably not a bad idea either. These are pretty loud. So just go ahead and cut a strip out of your saw blade. Then you can cut the strip to whatever shape you like. I'm just going to kind of square it off here and then switch over to a flap wheel, which is like a sanding wheel to go ahead and uh, refine this a little bit. As far as what shape exactly you do, I mean, you can do anything like a leaf blade or, a, you know, a constant taper all the way down to the point or whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Figure out about how much of a tab you're going to need for your handle and then go ahead and mark the end of your blade there. And I did put a slight bevel on this, but that was mostly just so I could see the edge a little cleaner, so I didn't have like the overhang stuff. These are not actually supposed to be sharp though, so don't uh, don't make it really sharp. For the handle on this one, I'm going to use a piece of an antler. Interesting note about antlers is uh, deer and other animals like them shed them every year. You don't actually have to hunt anything down or whatever. You can find antlers anywhere in the woodlands of North America, and the occasional unfortunate farmer's tractor tire. They're also on eBay. If you are using a natural material like antlers, though, you're going to have to mess with it a lot to figure out exactly how you want it to sit and what piece is the right size and so forth and so on. It's, uh, it's kind of fiddly, but I do like the end results of using antlers. So I'll just go ahead and cut the tines off of this one, and we'll have like a little bone thing sticking out for the uh, handle. Cut a little notch in it for the back end of that blade to go into. I don't have to be super clean here with how I'm cutting this because I'm going to wrap the very tip of it where it joins the, the handle and the blade. But I mean, normally you would want to be as accurate as possible. So now we'll just go ahead and take that flap wheel and clean up the whole thing. Be very careful not to actually dig into it. You're just trying to bust the scale off. So if you don't have or don't want to use any sort of antlers, you can of course use pieces of wood. Got some chunks of walnut here. And if you are a woodworker, you might want to look away because I'm about to make you cry. I only need two pieces of this to have flat ends, so I don't really care if the outside of it ends up all messed up and chewed up and stuff. So I'm just going to use the angle grinder's cutoff wheel to go ahead and split this piece for me. Figure out exactly how much I need. And now we can uh, go get these handles attached. Okay, so apparently the camera wasn't recording, but um, I took the one that I'm going to have to pin the handle on for the wood and uh, torched it with a propane torch in two spots because saw blades are super, super hard and you're not going to be able to drill through it unless you soften the metal. So that's why it's discolored there. Just figure out where the middle is, where I want to put the pins exactly, and then I can drill through it. But I want to show you something real quick. Even though I did soften this, if you were to try and pre-drill it with one of the smaller drill bits, you get this kind of weird, wobbly nonsense going on, especially if you got budget drill bits like I do. So what you can do instead, seems like an odd choice, is you can use a step bit and get it started. You don't have to go all the way through. Just get a, you know, a little spot started. And because the step bit is so hard and so bulky, it's not going to bend and wobble on you. You don't have to have a drill press for this, I just have one, so I'm using it. But anyway, once you get your little divot started, you can then use the appropriate size drill bit for whatever pin you're going to use and poke a hole straight through. Then using the uh, holes you drilled into the handle, you use those as guides for your wood piece. Just make sure that the flat part is actually what's on the, the uh, flat surface you're drilling against. And then you can use that as a guide to drill the second one using another drill bit or part of your pin or something to hold it together so you don't end up slipping and putting the hole in the wrong spot. And if your two handle scales are wildly different like mine are, you just use the drill bits as pins or use the pins, that'll work too. My pins are a little bit bigger than the drill bit, so I'm using the bits. But anyway, use those and uh, sandwich them together. Make sure you cut them, you know, basically even. 
At least on the front part, because that's the hardest part to correct once it's on the blade. And now we can uh, put some pins in there. For pins, I'm just using a piece of brass rod. Then grind the end so that it's a little bit tapered. Because the pins I'm using are just a little tiny bit bigger than the hole I drilled. And that is actually on purpose. Make sure you got all your stuff lined up. And bust out the 5 minute epoxy. Before I glue anything though, uh, heating up the handle portion there did make some um, heat distortion lines kind of creep up the blade a little bit. So I'm just going to take some real fine sandpaper and scrub everything nice and shiny again. Nothing too crazy, just trying to clean it up some. Then once all that's done, you can bust out the 5 minute epoxy and glue everything up. I actually make this look a whole lot more difficult than it really is, but trying to keep it in front of the camera is, is um, that really messes with you. Basically, just get the pin started on one scale, put it through the knife, and then through the other scale. It's really not that hard. I was just fumbling around a whole lot. Throw a few clamps on there to make sure it's going to stay nice and tight while the epoxy sets up. It is five minute, but I do like to leave it overnight. Same thing with this other one here. I just poured it into the gaps and kept messing with it until it had gotten thick enough I could stick it in the gap and it would stay there and not run out anywhere. No pins in this one because they're not needed. We'll let these sit and then we'll uh, go clean them up. Sorry about the uh, weird lighting and angle here, but I actually ended up kind of pressed for time and had to do this at night, so it's uh, not uh, the greatest light out there. But anyway, use the flap wheel and go ahead and clean all these up. Of course, epoxy dust is really not good for you, so definitely want that respirator. The shape of the handle is the same thing with the shape of the blade. You can really make it whatever you want. All I'm really trying to do with the one that's pinned is grind the wood down until it matches the metal of the tang that's running through the handle. That way you can see the shiny line going all the way through because it looks really nice. And as far as the outside profile of it, just thin and kind of rounded. The antler one took a little bit more effort because I had to get it straighter because it was um, a lot more curvy than I thought it was when I put it on there. Of course, do test it in your hand several times while you're doing this because it is more important how it feels in the hand than how it actually looks. But once you're all happy with that, you can take a little palm sander, put it upside down in your little, tiny little vise and clamp it in or you can strap it on with some ratchet straps or whatever. Or you can use it like it's intended to be used, but I like to use it this way. Go ahead and use a few various grits of sandpaper to clean up both the handles and the blades. With the blade, what I'm trying to do is round the edge off so it looks like it has an edge, but it, it doesn't actually. It just sort of rounds over. I'm trying to get like, um, like an oval shape. I had some epoxy squeeze out that I didn't notice, so I'll just use a little rotary tool to go ahead and take that out of the, the crack there at the front. And then sand the front of the handle down to where it matches the blade. Or pretty close anyway. The 400 grit sandpaper I had did not actually fit on the sander. So I just used it by hand. Trying to make everything nice and smooth. You can get out the multi thousand wet grit sanding pads if you want. I'm not getting quite that crazy here. But once you get it down to something you like. You go ahead and bring it in. And clean all that uh, sanding dust and stuff off with some alcohol. And then rub it down with oil, whatever kind you like. I'm using boiled linseed oil, but uh, one of my favorites is antique oil. I just don't seem to know where mine is. But it looks really good on antlers. It makes the uh, all little cracks and everything stand out. Then I cut off a little strip of some leather. I really, really don't like that leather lace on a spool because it breaks just because you looked at it funny. So cut off some little strips yourself. Put down some contact cement and then wrap this up. And I trimmed off the end there and then put more cement over the top of it. It does make it a lot darker, so you might want to skip that step if you don't want it to get really dark. But I like it because it makes it um, like old and tough. It takes quite a while to actually dry. You can sort of help that with uh, rubbing alcohol over the top of it. That'll make the uh, top most layer of glue dissolve and just kind of soak in. It'll, it'll more or less dry overnight. So then I decided that the Voldemort shank, as uh, Hate from the Tabletop Dungeoneers calls it, needed a little something extra, so I figured I'd show you guys a cool little trick here. You can get professionally laser-cut stick-on vinyl stencils for this, and little machines that um, electro-etch your stuff. None of that's necessary. You can do this the uh, low-budget way. 
put a little electrical tape on there and then uh, draw on what you want. These runes, I have no idea what they are. I got it off one of those Pinterest idea things. Then take an X-Acto knife and very, very carefully cut them out. It's extremely tedious and not very precise, or at least I'm not very precise, but it's good enough. Once you got those all cut out, you can then take a 9 volt battery and you hook one end of it to the uh, metal. And then you hook the end of it to a Q-tip and you dip the Q-tip in some salt water. And you hold it on to wherever you cut the tape away. You'll notice the metal turning black almost instantly. It doesn't engrave or etch or whatever very deep. It's just enough that you can see it, but it's enough for me. If you get professional machines and vinyls and stuff, you'll get way better results and a whole lot deeper of an etch. But this is, uh, this is fine. This looks pretty good to me. One thing I will note, though, is occasionally, you don't see it in my video here, but every now and then I have actually experienced this where it'll off-gas like a white fluffy gas. I have looked it up a bunch of times. I cannot get a straight answer on what that is. I don't know if it's hydrogen or chlorine. Either way, wear a mask while you're doing this and probably don't do it inside. Maybe one of you chemists out there might know what's going on. But anyway, you can uh, keep doing this as much as you want to get a deeper etch. Anytime your Q-tip gets really dirty, just go ahead and change it out and occasionally wipe it off. I also noticed that my tape was sticking because I totally forgot to wipe the oil off of the blade before I put the tape down. That's my fault. Definitely do that. Clean the oil off before you uh, tape it. But anyway, I don't really care that a little bit spilled out of the edge. Let's go ahead and clean it off real quick. That actually looks pretty good. It's a little rough, but it matches the rest of the build, so I really don't mind that. And where it came off the edge there, you can just use some real fine sandpaper and clean that up. It didn't edge, it just made it gross. There we go, a couple neat little letter openers. One is a more old school envisioning, and one's a more modern style. But what's important here is, do they work? Not going to show you the other side of this envelope, because it has my address on it. But uh, yeah, that definitely works. And of course, neither of them are actually sharp, because that would be dangerous to leave laying around. And depending on where you live, it might be illegal to have a double-bladed knife. So these are not knives. They are dull letter openers. So hopefully you guys have an interesting thing you could do for a gift for the holidays, or a prop for your game table. Or, you know, just use the methods for whatever other project you might have in mind. Of course, as always, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.